We continue meeting the candidates for the Jefferson County Commission with this next segment. We look at the Charlestown District, which is a three-person race. We have Jack Hefestay, the Republican. Jack, good morning. Thanks for coming in. David Walsh, the Democrat. David, thank you for coming in today. James Walsh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at David Tabb's name and saying James Walsh. Yeah, my mistake. James Walsh. And David Tabb, the Mountain Party candidate. Thank you for coming in, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. And I invite you all to move closer to your microphones as you uh, address the questions that are asked of you. And, uh, Mr. Tabb, if you could move yours a little bit more central to your uh, to your mouth. There you go. Thank you. Uh, each of you will be given a minute for an opening statement and then a closing statement as well. In between, you'll be given questions from former Berkeley County Commission President Bill Stubblefield and the editor of the Independent Observer newspaper, Steve Pearson. And uh, I try to uh, limit you to about two minutes on your responses, if you could. If your name or a policy is brought up by one of your opponents, you have the right to a direct response at the conclusion of their sentence. And we'll begin now with opening statements. Now we'll begin with Mr. Walsh and work our way across the, the dais there. Great. Thank you so much for having me. My name is James Walsh. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Jefferson County. I live in downtown Charlestown with my wife, Rainey, and my son, James Beckett. I'm a graduate of Jefferson High School, uh, West Virginia University, where I got a bachelor's in business and uh, went to school locally at American Public University, where I got a mass, my, my MBA, master's in business in marketing. Um, I am running for county commission because Jefferson County, in my opinion, is at, uh, we're at a critical point here. We're the second fastest growing county in the state, and we're seeing some unique challenges in Jefferson County that we haven't had to deal with before. Leadership has been lacking uh, at the county level, uh, and so I, s I see an opportunity to, uh, to, to uh, put my hat in the ring and do the best I can for the county. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Tapp. Well, first off, I'm really pleased to have you guys here today uh, to get the word out and what all the candidates are bringing to the table. Um, of course, I'm David Tapp, running for Charlestown District for County Commission. Again, uh, my opponent before, uh, she quit after five months. Um, I'm a resident, lifelong resident taxpayer and business owner. I've been paying taxes for 65 years. I've uh, been in business and farming and other structural business. Um, I'm on the local emergency planning uh, association, the um, EPCD, which is the Eastern Panhandle Conservation District. I'm a EPA stormwater um, inspector. Um, I'm a DOT inspector and I'm also a building contractor for my own purposes and use. So. Um, I also have a degree in, in engineering, and so I'm very diverse on using materials over and over again. My whole campaign is reused material, and I, at this point in time, other than my campaign um, filing fee, I've spent zero dollars. So I'm here to help the public and make them aware of what's going on, and I do already do that on a daily basis. Mr. Tapp, representing the Mountain Party from the Republican Party, Jack Hefestay. Mr. Hefestay. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having this forum. Uh, I'm running. I'm Jack Hefestay. I'm the Republican from Charlestown. I'm running for this position because I do not have a special interest. I am retired. I uh, have a degree uh, from the University of Colorado, where I lived for many years but I moved back to Jefferson County and West Virginia as soon as I was free of my military obligations. I was a, I am a retired United States Navy captain uh, with 25 years service. I have been on numerous boards uh, on the county and I learned a lot from being on those boards about the county, how it operates, and what some of the special uh, gifts are that Jefferson County has that a lot of other counties don't have. Uh, particularly, I had a good time uh, learning and having fun on the Historic Landmarks Commission where they do uh, a, a variety of wonderful things to benefit tourism in the county. Uh, I also uh, served on the Planning Commission and it's only been on that for eight years and uh, have perfect attendance. And I, I, I think it's very, very important that uh, any of the commissioners that get elected are responsive and the boards that they are assigned to 
they maintain that liaison so that uh, we learn as much as we possibly can about the special groups that are out there because they are closest to the problems. I, uh, I pledge to be an advocate uh, for the benefit of all residents and not for just a privileged few. Uh, my motive is to improve conditions in Jefferson County for all the people, not just a few. My entire salary after taxes, of course, will be donated to uh, nonprofit organizations, most of which will be local. So I am not doing this uh, job or, or seeking this position to gain uh, any enrichment. And I, I detest people that, that run for uh, political office to get special deals or insider deals uh, with uh, commissioners or different boards. So um, in a nutshell, I want to I want to work for the people of Jefferson County, and not for myself. I listen very carefully. I'm always in learning mode. I want to understand what's going on. I value citizen input uh, more than anything else. I get uh, I, I get almost every day or every day intensive uh, contacts from people who want to get me uh, on board with different issues in the county. So uh, anyway, that's it. Mr. Pierce. Okay, Let's start off with a question about jobs. So the county commission is actually one of the larger employers in the county. And as I go to county commission meetings, you hear the sheriff, you hear the director of EMS, you hear various offices you know, struggling to fill open positions. Uh, we have a, a, a zoning office position that was advertised, got no applicants. So what will you, as commissioners, how do you address this uh, this staffing crisis that we seem to be having here in Jefferson County? We'll start with Mr. Heffestad. Uh It's very interesting. It's a good question that you brought up. Uh, first of all, uh, the staffing is very, very important. Uh, one of the things uh, that I perceive is a lot of the, uh, the county positions um, have have failed or people don't want to continue to stay in, in the particular uh, department that they're in because there has been a toxic environment in the county with uh, hiring people. And it's a shame because we have lost some really, really good people. Uh, the other problem is, is we have people who have been in the position for a very, very long time and we have offered succession plans and the people, uh, once they get involved and see what's going on, uh, it's a bigger job than they thought it was, and they're not getting the turnover insight to the to taking over the job that they should have. So it's a it's they're, uh, I guess the way I would explain it is, I built it, I created it, and I don't want to share any information, and that's not that's not right. And if we have to get in there and and force that, that's what we'll have to do. But I, I'm concerned uh, that we have a high turnover rate with the different play, different uh, positions in the county. We just lost a very, very, very good person out of the, the, the planning department who is, in my opinion, irreplaceable because she was homegrown. She, ra she uh, arose through the ranks and was very, very good, and she was designated to take over the top spot. Uh, in the planning department in, in the Mason building, and uh, she chose to leave and go elsewhere. So I heard that it, uh, the environment there was just too toxic. So. Mr. Trapp. Thank you. You need to step back and do a little history on this problem because the racetrack and horse racing industry was challenging the public years ago and they wanted to put in video lottery and slot machines. And by doing that, they promised to give a lot of money. And they did for a while. Then after they settled in, and they took, in, took another shot at how they were gonna make money, they took in, subdivided the property or two different entities, so now they have to pay rent uh, or lease the property. It was a strategic move, it was a business move. I don't have a problem with it. But the county took that money that that was gonna last forever. And then it hasn't. And now they've over-structured 
inside on personnel but never did anything on putting a business or a complex in place which they had money to do in 2006. They blew $10 million, a gift, and they blew it. They did all these plans and everything and ran out of time and had to spend a half a million dollars or pay a half a million dollars back because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. It's all about business and planning. You're either growing or you're dying. This county is dying. The state has held us at hostage. We've had roads for the last 50 years planned, Route 340. It's just now being extended on one end. Route 9, up on the mountain, the bridge, was put in five years before they put in the bypass. Why do you do things? We, at the back in the 1800s up through the 1900s, we were the hub of the Eastern Panhandle. We have been cut off strategically because we didn't listen to what Charleston wanted us to do. The county commission has tried to stop me because I said one word. I don't have to win to continue. I've been representing the public for years. They put sanctions on me, court sanctions on me because of what I do. I attend the county commission meetings, all of them, for 18 years. I notify the public. I told them what was coming down the road and nobody wanted to see it, and here we are. So thank you for the question. Mr. Walsh. Mr. Walsh. It's a good question. I think this is a, there's really two pieces to this. I would say first we need to make sure that our county uh, workers and county officials are being compensated sufficiently for the jobs they're doing. Um, we see folks in the uh, in police, fire, ambulance, uh, they're going over county lines to work in other counties because they're paid double the amount that they're being paid in Jefferson County. And when you when you talk about a staffing crisis, I think, I believe that it all stems, this all stems from a culture crisis that we've been seeing, a culture crisis at the county commission. Uh, there's been a ton of vitriol and hate spewed from, from uh, different factions that the uh, folks in the former county commission were involved in, and it, and it led the county to a standstill. So, um, you know, I believe we need to build, work on building uh, an atmosphere of inclusion positivity, uh, no siloing of information. We need interdepartmental and agency communication. When, when information gets siloed, uh, things get lost in the fray and progress is, is stifled. So ultimately, we need county offic officials who are willing to work together, Republican, Democrat, Independent, it doesn't matter. The national hot button issues should not be brought into county politics. It's what's caused the derailing of county government here for uh, what was, you know, previous eight months. So I believe it's a culture crisis that we need to address uh, ultimately to fix the staffing crisis where people want to be here. Bill, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, through the years, it uh, seems like the uh, major economic development in Jefferson County is building homes. You're very good at building developments. Uh, but I, but the other aspects of economic development have been more rocky or more uneven. Uh, what do you see as a way forward for economic development in Jefferson County? And as an adjunct to that, do you see a TIF program or pilot program as being integral to that way forward? And who would you like to start with? Oh, let's start with Mr. Wells, sorry. So I, I think that TIFs or pilots uh, we need to look at... Let me, excuse me, I would like to go the other way, economic development first, and then as an adjunct to that, do you see very quickly one statement is TIF... Uh, okay, sorry. Part. There we okay. Go. okay, so, yeah, the, um, the county is growing very, very quickly. We see developments popping up everywhere. So, in the previous segment, we, we talked about uh, land rights, farmers... Many of these people want to sell their land, but if we tell them you can, you, you can only do X, Y, or Z with it, um, it presents 
it, it presents a roadblock. And then uh, property rights are inherently kind of stepped on. So we need to offer uh, solutions and opportunities to landowners uh, so that they're, we're not, they're not just told they can't do X, Y, or Z with their land. Um, and that starts with research. It starts with looking at the fabric of our community, the fabric of Jefferson County, and understanding what best uh, suits the county. Then going out and targeting businesses, marketing to businesses. Marketing is a, huge, is, is a key component to this. Um, West Virginia, in my opinion, is, is, a, is a prime place for business, but it has to be the right business. It has to be sustainable. And there's no easy solution to this. Uh, there's no easy, easy path forward uh, when you're looking at land rights. So um, I think it's, it's, it's a multi-pronged approach, and it takes research, it takes marketing, and we need to understand uh, and leverage what makes Jefferson County unique and special. On the TIF and pilot agreements, I would say uh, I agree with Ms. Blessing in the, in the current, in, in the previous segment that, um, you know, if, if agro-tourism, if we're going to incentivize people to, to keep their land, um, then may, we need to incentivize them to do so. And so uh, TIFs, pilots for the right types of businesses, sustainable businesses, businesses that are going to employ local workforces um, are are, uh, I would say, you know, something that we can look at. Just giving a, a massive company a TIF or pilots so that they'll, so that they'll come here, I think is, is a non-starter for me. Okay, thank you. Mr. Tabb. So, Jefferson County Development Authority. Inefficiency, no structure, secret. They do everything in secret. Rockwell, I challenged them from the beginning, not because of the business, because of the pollution. I'm an environmentalist and an inspector for that. So what else has the Jefferson County Development Authority brought to our attention to even bring in everything had pollution to do with it? Rockwell land was scheduled to be a data center. Jefferson County is not fit to have data centers. We're in karst topography. Data centers are noisy. They create a lot of vibration. We would have had an echo chamber. That's why they didn't come in here. They were scheduled to be here and left. So you have to understand the topography, where we are, how everything works, climate, structure, utilities, and none of that's been done. I already have that information in my hand. So the USDA had a new center. We could have been at Rockwell instead. Development Authority didn't even apply for it. We had a uh, structured community so that they could take the train and stuff. Again, failed. Why? Because nobody tried. TIFs and pilots. The pilot was done for Rockwell. They got $150 million to start, another $50 million to continue on. And here, they don't have to pay any taxes. A TIF is also another thing that just got done. And even though I believe that it could have been on, on a motel, but it was between 30 and $50 million giveaway. So if you're bringing these businesses and stuff in, and then you give them all these tax incentives, and you don't follow through whether it's going to be profitable or not, then we are done. There is no planning, no infrastructure, no site. And another point is rural vendors, while Rockwell was going on, 230 employees asked for some funding, $50 million, to upgrade their equipment. They said, no. We lost 230, 230 people because they wouldn't help out. The county does not help the people that are here. 
and they, in turn, only got 38 employees from Rockwell. Mr. Tefsey? Uh, that's, that's a very interesting question that you just asked. Uh, thank you. I think it's very important that the Jefferson County Commissioners are open to new businesses coming into the county. I personally favor environmental friendly, and I want businesses that will actually bring real jobs to the county. So that's the two things I look at uh, it, when there's a possibility of a new business. As county commissioner who's ever elected, the four, the four that get elected, will get better exposure to what's being proposed and in coming into the county because a lot of stuff just isn't available for the common citizen. Now, as far as the Jefferson County Development Authority is concerned, uh, they've had a big turnover recently. Uh, I was uh, I was privy to the resumes that were submitted and the people that were selected, and I'm very optimistic that the current JCDA, not the old one that made a lot of bad mistakes, but the current one is uh, is on the right track, going to do a good job for Jefferson County. Uh, we have a, a brand new uh, county administrator, uh, and uh, she's, she's doing a great, Ms. Benitez is absolutely fantastic, doing a great job. But the key thing I want to I emphasize is county commissioners will have greater insight to what's coming down the pike than the average citizen. I want to share that information and get it out to the public. Uh, JCDA does hold public sessions, uh, and I think they're worth attending for anyone who is, uh, uh, has an inclination toward doing any sort of business in Jefferson County. I think we're open uh, to, to new business, but like I said, as I want clean, environmentally safe stuff, and I want to bring jobs to Jefferson County. The other thing is we have... Uh, the opportunity to bring wineries into Jefferson County, which are very lucrative uh, for farmers. And I think any farmer that has a chunk of property that's uh, uh, very fertile, and believe me, Jefferson County has a lot of good property, that they consider uh, putting in a winery is a great deal. So. Gentlemen, we are down to closing statements at this time, and Mr. Tab, we will begin with you. So... Again, I'm running for Charlestown District uh, for County Commission. I have the experience. Um, I have the information. Actually, I release more information to the public than the County Commission does. Absolutely just say it. My experience is paramount. I started my own businesses. No one helped me. But not everybody can do that on their own. So what is the county going to do to fix this? It's also up to the public. The county commission is supposed to be running the, the county on a day-to-day -day basis, but instead they're trying to make decisions on what the view vista of the county is going to be for the next 50 or 100 years. I say that the public has the right to say what that's going to be. And we, the people of the county, have not been given or afforded that. Everything's been done in secret. I know a lot of their secrets. I can't even tell you all the secrets that I know right now because I'll divulge my people that tell me this every day what's going on. So with that, if the people want to stand up and vote and get a real change and get a handle on this so we can put together something together for the next 50 years, vote for me. I'll work for you 24-7. I'm already doing it. So I'm available, and I hope that everyone understands that I'm here for you, and I have no special interest, and my funding has been all mine. Thank you. Mr. Hefestay. Uh, once again, thanks for having us here. Uh, I'd like to point out that, uh, that my, ch my chief reason for running is I want to improve things in Jefferson County. I don't have a special interest. I have a lot of experience. Uh, working uh, 25 years in the Navy, 
I worked uh, for a large aerospace company for over three decades. Uh, I was able to do both because I, I did a lot of time in the Navy as active and reserve, so I was able to, to manage two, two full-time careers successfully. Uh, the other thing that I, that I want to point out by having that experience is when you're in the Navy or any other organization, you're going to run into people that you may not agree with. So the important thing to do is have a, an atmosphere or a mentality that's collaborative. There are five county commissioners. That's a, for mathematics, that's only 20% per person. So you have to be able to deal with and get along with the other people uh, on the commission and hopefully work with them where we can come to a, a mutually beneficial agreement, not for ourselves or for a special interest, but for the people of Jefferson County. And that's where I want to go, is every time I look at an issue, um, uh, I'm, I'm an engineer uh, by trade, and I think of everything in, in three terms. What is the cost? What is the schedule? And what are the technical portions? And that's uh, project management. And I like to kind of use that when I'm in, uh, in the county commission seat and help the people of Jefferson County to get what they deserve. We had a lot of things that have not been addressed properly in the past. They need to be fixed. Uh, the most important thing we do on the county commission is allocate funds. Uh, fire, police, and EMS have not got the, uh, the information or the money that they needed to, to continue uh, correctly. So that's my number one priority is taking care of our uh, uh, first responders. Thank you, Mr. FSA. Mr. Walsh. So thank you to WRNR for, for having us on and giving us the opportunity to uh, talk a little, bit about, a little bit about the issues in the county and our platforms. Um, again, my name is James Walsh. I'm running for the Charlestown uh, County Commission seat. If anyone has been following uh, my platform since day one, I've been running a campaign based on civility, transparency, and accountability. And that might, might sound like a cliche, but those are three things that have been missing from county government in Jefferson County. And I hope to bring them back. I, I truly believe that good government, effective government, um, begins with civility. And so, if elected, I hope to bring an air of civility back to the county commission. I'm willing to work with anyone, Republican, Democrat, Independent, uh, work across the aisle for the best interests of all people in Jefferson County. So I thank you for the opportunity uh, to let us do this, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you to all three of you. We appreciate your attendance here today for this political forum, and we wish you the best of luck in the upcoming election. Thank you. Thank you.